Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process from Albert Einstein, who happens to be uh, one of the not only the greatest scientist of 19th century, but also uh, an inspirator for me. So, therefore, I put this thing, his thought process, the concern for man and his destiny must always be the chief interest of all technical effort. I would like to put also say that it is not only the technical effort, any effort as a matter of fact. Never forget that it among your diagrams and equations that we do and then we forget about the humanity in that. So, uh, we will now be discussing about the some concepts which are very important for the thermodynamic and in the last lecture we discuss about work and the way work is defined in thermodynamic is quite different than that of the mechanics and we demonstrated also that limitation of the definition of work given uh, what you call in mechanics. <coughs> However, we looked at the thermodynamic definition encompasses all the kinds of work not only the PDV work but also the soft work and then uh, electrical work, surface tension work and, uh, uh, and other things. And some of the examples I have not taken also like for example, magnetization you know that you can also whenever the it will be magnetized you, some work can be done and one can also define very easily with the definition of thermodynamics. So, so also the dielectric material whenever there will be interaction there will be some work done and several other things which I have not included because of paucity of time. And today what we will be discussing is basically another form of uh, interaction what we call it as basically heat interaction. So, if you look at the a thermodynamic system can interact with its surrounding in two modes one is the work other is the heat. Question arises what do we mean by the heat? Generally you can say look uh, I mean like you know I am having a lot of energy to do the work some people say look I am very tired I do not have energy right. And whenever you say that you know some energy in a little qualitative manner right we can say it is hot or it is the energy content of a body right or a material. So, is it really so? Right. We call it as a you know a condition being hot or cold or constituted as the energy content of the body, right, or something like that. But is it really so? Is it the heat is same as that of the energy? Is it so? Or it is similar to the you know work. The we uh, we uh, we have discussed in the last lecture that work is basically energy in what in transient. It doesn't depend, you know, uh, on what you call point. It will be dependent on the path, right? So therefore, it is a uh, energy a transfer or rather <coughs> uh, in the through the form of work. So, however, what I as I told that energy and heat are altogether different thing in thermodynamic sense. It is not same as that of the what you call energy, because heat is basically uh, not a property of the system and energy is a property of a system and it will be possessed by the system, right. Is it heat will be possessed by the system? Generally common sense people say, but in thermodynamic sense we do not say that. So, 
heat is manifested when a system undergoes a change, right. For example, I will take the example of hot uh, what you call tea, right. If I do that, you know it is a hot tea and the ambient temperature, if you look at here uh, somewhere around this point or any other point, it will be what? It will be low. For example, if I say something this temperature is something 90 degrees Celsius, let us say, you know for example. And here it will be maybe let us say 25 degrees Celsius in this room, because the AC room we might have maintained at 25 degrees Celsius, right. So, there will be what? Heat transfer from the hot tea to the its surrounding, right. Yes or no, I can take this as a system, you know like simply a system I can say this is my system kind of thing and there will be heat transfer, right. So, <coughs> therefore, heat transfer takes place due to what? Due to temperature gradient, right. So, <coughs> and then one can say basically heat transfer, right, that in thermodynamic sense we call it basically the you know heat. In this case energy transfer takes place till it attains the thermal equilibrium and you know like if the heat will go, uh, if heat will you know will be transferred this and then what will happen? The temperature here it will be dropping down and here there are nearby this place it will be going up like 25 degree maybe you know 30 degree nearby not very far away from the cup of the hot tea. And then whenever it will remain you know both the temperature will be same both the system. So, if it is my this is my system right and this is your surrounding then what will happen? There would not be any change of heat transfer or no energy will be transferred due to temperature gradient. So, therefore, we can define the heat as then you know uh, interaction energy interaction between system and surrounding due to temperature gradient right. So, in the work whatever the things we are doing there are several gradients we talk about like you know there will be uh, what you call surface tension, there will be pressure gradient, there will be you know magnetization or dipole effect or electromotive forces these are all gradient right. So, but here the heat is due to the temperature gradient, there will be energy in interaction that we call it as a heat. So, if you look at basically heat in thermodynamic sense right can be defined as a energy in transit, it is similar to that of the work. So, what are the differences between work and heat? In case of heat it is due to temperature gradient right and whereas, others will be due to other various gradient like pressure gradient, concentration gradient sorry pressure gradient and then may be uh, what you call electromotive forces and other forces like surface tension. So, heat is also a path function like work it will be dependent on the path it takes and in the differential form we call it as delta Q or q 1 2 any symbol we can use 1 2 will be more specific that means, it is between the state 1 to the state 2 or. So, therefore, the heat per unit time we call it as a kilo watt that is kilo joule per second in SI unit and specific heat transfer we will be using you know like uh, which is heat per unit mass and we will be also using heat per unit mole right depending on the problems depending on situation. So, as it is uh, what you call heat is basically a an, uh, is it a extensive property or intensive property? Is it we can is it a property of the system? No, no right. So, <coughs> but whereas energy is a property of the system. So, here we will be using the symbol like uh, you know like a direction wise and uh, that if the heat is going coming from the surrounding right to the system we call it positive 
and when the heat is going from the system to its surrounding or heat is transferred by the system to its surrounding, right? we call it negative. Keep in mind that in some book, people use different you know uh, sign conventions, just opposite of that. So, that really does not matter if we use a consistent uh, what you call sign. That means, if you look at uh, the work done by the system, what it would be? Work done by the system, whether it will be positive or negative, according to our sign it will be positive and work done on the system will be negative. But in, he, in case of heat, it is just opposite, heat is transferred to the system is positive and heat is transferred from the system to its surrounding is negative, just opposite. In some book you may find just opposite of that, like you know heat transferred to the system is uh, negative and heat transfer from the system is positive and then work also done will be just opposite of that. Okay? Are you people getting confused? What I am trying to say that if you do this sign convention properly, then it is you know it will be same. So, we will be using the sign convention and uh, let us look at the heat in thermodynamic sense, whatever we have uh, discussed till now, it is equal to the heat transfer you know kind of things and heat transfer can occur uh, by the three modes. You, some of I mean all of you will be knowing heat conduction, heat convection and radiation. I will just uh, you know give some example like and then tell that what is that. Like if you look at if you uh, you know touch a pan which is on a stove or a hot plate, in this case it is a hot plate right and then what will happen? You will feel hot, right? it will get burned if it is very high temperature right? and that is due to what? Due to contact, by contacting a metal right? we get the heat and that is what we call the heat conduction. In case of heat conduction, energy is transferred by direct contact right? and of course, uh, it will be uh, you know some laws will be used and that uh, you know laws of what you call uh, Fourier's law and then we will be uh, also let us look at the uh, what you call convective heat transfer, where if you take a pan and there is a hot water here right and, and when this is you know come in contact the lower bottom portion of this pan with the hot plate and it will be heated and then water will be going uh, up and then you know of course, it may be cooled by transferring and it sometimes it will vaporize also and as a result you know the, the energy is transferred by the motion of molecules, because we know that when the mo molecule will be receiving the heat, it will be moving at a higher velocity. So, it will be moving up and that we call it as a heat convection and heat radiation we know that we uh, use you know in the winter particularly you know we will be using uh, heating uh, or getting heat from the fire or some other uh, you know heaters resistance heater kind of things and then we can even though we are sitting out uh, away from the heating source we can get heat and we get radiation in all the times. So, that is basically <coughs> the heat rate in uh, you know energy transfer due to by the radiation and this, this contains some electromagnetic waves and then you know like <coughs> that we call radiations. So, it will be all combination of the heat conduction, convection and radiation which will be taking place and uh, that makes the heat to you know transfer kind of thing. So, if you look at the two modes of energy transfer work and heat depend on the choice of the system what you consider. right? Uh, let us take an example, like because uh, you know, like whether the work transfer, or heat transfer, you know, how you will define in uh, a system, you know, will be dependent on the how you have chosen your system. Otherwise, it will be different. For example, I will take this uh, system, right? If you look at this is a heater, 
right resistance heater you can say and it is connected to a battery and then you are heating the water right and this is our system right now system which one i'll take so whether i will take the water i can take water as a system exclude the heater okay exclude the heat he, heater then what will happen i can choose just the water which include you know uh, sorry i can take the water along with the heater there is a system i can think of am i right or not for example if i take this as my system that is the water only water in this case i have taken i have excluded this as my heater from this what it will be will it be work or will it be heat interaction with the what it would be i told you i can take two system in this case one is one is water only water in this case only water i have taken i have excluded the heater from the system right and i can take another system which include not only the water but also the heater so which case it will be work which case it will be heat that is the question are you getting so in this case the as i told the system is basically water and the surrounding will be heater and battery right the interaction will be energy transfer and due to temperature gradient if there is a temperature gradient because the surface temperature here if you look at it, it will be very high and then there will be heat transfer to the water and then you call it as a heat interaction right but if i take the other kind of things where only the water as my system not only the only water but also the heater as a part of the system then what it will be that will be work because you can think of that you know heater and being replaced by a motor and then you know it is with a pulley it is raising a mass and then going through the gravitational force field moving and then you can call it as a work done am i right according to the thermodynamic definition so therefore that will be the what you call uh, work interaction in this case heater and water is your system and surrounding is your battery because that is the giving the uh, what you call electricity right and that will be converted into mechanical kind of thing one can conceive that and then one can say it is a work done right so what i am uh, trying to emphasize here in this case by taking this example that it is important to choose proper you know uh, uh, system boundary and also do the proper analysis identify whether it is heat or work otherwise suppose you have chosen the uh, heater uh, what you call water as your boundary system boundary like water only you have considered as a system and then you are saying it is work done so naturally you will be wrong so therefore one has to be one has to be careful about that let us look at another uh, example like uh, what you call there is a there is a paddle wheel which is rotating right and then it is uh, connected to a uh, what you call pulleys and to a mass which is uh, moving against the gravitational therefore what will happen it will be rotated and some work is being done right and when this work is being done what happened to its temperature will it be remaining same or it will be different will it be lower down or it will be decreasing or sorry where it will be low, decreasing or whether, whether it will be increasing it will be definitely increasing right so let's say instead of that i will take a system where it you are putting some kind of a you know heat and then whatever temperature let's say it will be started to 25 degrees celsius here in there it has gone to 30 degrees celsius and here it has gone also 25 degrees celsius to 30 degrees celsius and then 
I will uh, what you call uh, you know I need to identify whether it is a work done or whether it is a heat done, heat being transferred. Is it possible? Actually, it is impossible to know the mode of energy transfer once it is completed, right? Once it is completed, you do not know really whether it is a work done or a heat transfer or whether the energy transfer has taken place through the mode of heat or the work. So, that thing you should keep in mind. <coughs> so, what are the similarities between the work and heat? Let us summarize it. What are the similarities? What are those? Both are energy transfer in transit, right? Yes or no? Both are path function, right? Or in exact differential. And both heat and work are boundary phenomena. It means it is takes place, all this transfer takes place through the boundary of the system, right. And system never possess either the heat or the work, it, then what does it possess? It possess the energy and which is the property of the system. So, these are the similarities between the work and heat. Okay. So, just to summarize the sign convention, I am just again repeating the work done by the system is positive and work done on the system is negative and heat transfer to the system from its surrounding is positive and heat given by the system to its surrounding right is known is negative right so these are the convention we will be using but however you can make it just opposite you know just oppose it, then that does not matter, you know, whenever you are applying this thing to the, uh, you know, thermodynamic relations, it would not be really uh, having any consequence. So, now we will come to a point to discuss about how to specify a thermodynamic system, because it is important for us to specify a thermodynamic system as uh, you know there will be interaction between the system and its surrounding uh, as a uh, result there will be certain amount of you know uh, matter which will be affected by this energy transfer right and this we need to look at the properties and hence a system can be specified by the composition of matter right for example if i consider the air right how many moles of oxygen and how many moles of nitrogen will be there we need to look at it similarly we need to look at what is the energy content of that matter at a particular pressure and temperature if i take an example you know of an ideal gas which is at a particular you know volume certain amount of gas is there and at a particular temperature so therefore I should also know the measurable properties like pressure, temperature kind of things and I should know the volume, I should know what is the energy content and I should know the composition of the matters. Right? This is, these are the things are required to specify a system. So, by specifying these quantities, the state of the system can be defined and for example, like for an ideal gas we know that P V is equal to N R U T, R U is basically gas constant. That means, it is basically function of pressure, volume, temperature and number of moles. Right. Okay. So, uh, therefore, we need to uh, look at like uh, co you know properties of this, and but question arises, how many variables can be varied independently. For example, if I take an ideal gas, uh, if I increase the pressure, what will happen to volume? Right? If I increase the pressure, what happens to temperature? Can I vary it independently? You know? So, uh, that we need to look at and thermodynamic properties basically are related to energy and its transformation. That is the crux of the thing. So, we need to look at that 
number of independently variable properties will be basically equal to number of ways by which energy of the system can be varied right we can we can uh, you know uh, make a guess out of that that means that how many ways we can vary the energy of a system right so let us consider the gas in a piston cylinder arrangement and this we call it as a system the dashed line and uh, we are put to identify the system boundary and it is having certain weight kind of things. So, what will happen in this case the work energy transfer can be take place by what by P d V work right is not it. So, if the piston can move up or the down some work will be done either by the system or by its surrounding okay. and there might be also some heat interactions. So, therefore, in these situations what we will do? We can say that you know by the two mode the you know uh, energy of the system can be varied. Similarly, if I take an elastic bar then there will be applied a force and then there will be a stress here right and if you look at if I apply a force it may be elongated if it is elastic resin it will be elongated and if you remove this force then it will be come back to its original position right. Similarly, if I will heat a metal rod what will happen? It can also be expanded and again it will contract provided it is a very small change in temperature or the heat you have given the heat interaction is not too strong right. If you might be knowing that when you are using very high temperature or the gradient kind of things it may not it may bend right <coughs> or it may not come back to its original position. So, therefore, in this case it is a basically by the stress or by the heat interaction. So, uh, if you look at uh, I mean we need to look at uh, basically how many thermodynamic property has to be varied independently. Let us take an ideal gas again same example what we will do we will keep this thing in a hot bath let us say there is a something hot bath here right. This is the hot bath, hot bath means it will the temperature can be maintained at a constant you know the temperature can remain constant is a big like you can think of what will be a hot bath let us say it should be having a very large amount of mass at a particular temperature so that if any inter heat interaction will be taking place between the system here and its surrounding. So, this is my system and this is my surrounding then that temperature will not change right are you getting. For example, if I put uh, you know take some kind of a let us say hot rod which is at 70 degree Celsius and put into a pool, pool means you know very big uh, what you call water pool and then what will happen the temperature will not change at all as such okay, of the total water. So, uh, if you look at the at this temperature at the constant bath the gas can be compressed by changing the volume right. I can put a weight and then it can come over here right the piston can move and then the change in the volume. So, that means there is a interaction between the system and surrounding and in this case temperature remaining constant that means energy is constant while the volume is changing right is not it. The energy is of the system will be remaining constant because the what you call the temperature is remaining constant right energy basically I mean internal energy. So, let us take a another uh, situation where the we are giving the heat and latching it such that the piston will not move and the volume is remaining constant. So, therefore, energy is changed now see in that case energy not changing in the uh, earlier example now it is change due to the heat transfer. However, the volume is remaining constant 
So, hence one can say that energy and volume can be varied independently for a compressible system, because this is what we are discussing now a compressible system where you can compress it right or you can expand it. So, when energy and uh, volume can remain constant for a system which is the thermodynamic property that can vary independently right. So, then question arises you know like which is the thermodynamic property that can vary independently we will have to look at it. So, let us uh, other variables like pressure can be changed independently like when this is changing like you know one can think of changing the pressure. We know that the pressure of the gas can be varied by three more ways I mean like one is by compressing that we know right. If I compress a gas the pressure will increase or I can you know fix the volume then I will heat it. In the last example where the piston is being latched that means volume not and when I am heating it what will happen to pressure? Pressure will go up am I right or wrong? But similarly, if I will uh, you know uh, keep the volume constant and vigorously stir and give some work what will happen that again pressure will go up. So, if gas is compressed then volume is decreasing and energy remaining constant right. And by heating what is happening energy can be increasing while volume is remaining constant right. And in stirring what is happening energy is uh, increasing while volume remain constant. This similar heating one is the work you can think of stirring is nothing but a what you call uh, soft work kind of things. And in the other example it is the heating and uh, if you look at the change in pressure alters what it does either energy or the volume. One cannot really keep both as a constant you know I cannot really make the you know volume and energy constant right you cannot do that. So, therefore, we can say that every mode work mode one thermodynamic properties can be varied either heating, heating is one of the mode and other is your work in this example stirring is the work and heating is the heat transfer whatever taking place and that is basically two mode. So, for every work mode one thermodynamic property can be varied independently that is only valid for the compressible substance ok, what we will be using simple compressible substance. So, the work mode is basically the generalized displacement which we have discussed can only be varied independently right. For the uh, work mode the you know you can vary uh, the displacement generalized displacement it need not to be PDV work it can be soft work it can be stretch or the surface tension stretch due surface tension work it can be magnetization you know that can be varied independently. So, therefore, we can say that if the system has several reversible work mode then number of independent thermodynamic variables is basically number of the reversible work mode plus 1 right. One will be basically the heat you know one can think of. So, and that is nothing but the state postulate which will help us to say that how many variables can be changed independently that is for a given thermodynamic system the number of independent uh, variables that can be changed variables mean I mean the thermodynamic properties is equal to number of reversible work mode plus 1. So, let us uh, consider that if nth reversible work mode is there then number of independent thermodynamic properties are basically equal to n plus 1 for complete description of the system. If we consider a simple compressible system with a single gas one can think of 
is basically number of thermodynamic uh, properties that can be varied independently is equal to 2, because one is a reversible work and other is one reversible work plus one. But if system contains n moles of gas and system can be described by completely uh, internal energy, volume, number of moles. But if system contains mixture of gases, the variable will be more depending upon the number of kind of gases will be there and which will be required for specifying a system completely. So, uh, what we will uh, do, we have uh, talked about basically how many variables and other things, we will just uh, quickly look at what do we mean by temperature, because whatever the heat you know uh, transfer or the heat being interaction is taking place between the system and surrounding, it is due to the temperature gradient. Therefore, we uh, need to understand what do you mean by the temperature, right. So, generally we use temperature very often in our uh, you know vocabulary, whenever we talk we say that temperature is increasing, decreasing, but what do you mean? Like we can say it is a basically hotness or a coldness kind of thing, it is a measure of hotness or coldness. Some people can say look you know warm or hot or the red hot right and that is with our senses right and our senses may be misleading. For example, if uh, now let us say it is hot quite and summer you know hot summer. Now, you are sitting now on a wooden chair, let us say there is a wooden chair in the hot summer outside not in the AC room right and you will sit down there, what do you feel? It will be hot or uh, and there is an uh, or not, there is another chair in the same place it is being placed, one is made of metal, one is made of wood right. So, if you sit down there the same person and what do you feel, which will be you know hotter uh, at least according to your sense, huh? which one metal will be hotter, why because both are at same temperature. Right. So, therefore, the it is uh, misleading, because your sense the same sensor you are using and then it will be misleading kind of things. <coughs> so, uh, you know like, but however, we need to talk about the temperature like uh, what we will be doing, we will be uh, looking at this example with the copper block at 150 degrees Celsius and there is another copper block at 50 degree Celsius and it is having a partition right, which is separating and that partition is being removed and this both the block will be coming in contact with each other. So, what will happen? If this block is removed right and then the heat uh, the you know the heat from the higher temperature will be passing through the copper block which is at the lower temperature right. And if you allow a large amount of time or the sufficient amount of time, what will happen? It will reach a steady state temperature and of course, it will be changing with respect to time, but if you give lapse enough time, then you know it will reach a temperature and is already insulated. So, we can call it basically it has reached a thermal equilibrium, right. So, and that is uh, you know we can state in a very different way, we do use this uh, thermal equilibrium in our day to day life also right. Uh, let us say that this block A is in thermal equilibrium with block B right and we can also uh, conduct experiment and also do that like in the therm the block C is in thermal equilibrium with block B. Then we can say that the block A is in thermal equilibrium with the block C and that is nothing 
but your zero law of thermodynamic which was given by R H Fowler in 1931 and much later than the first and second law of thermodynamics. That means, before uh, this law being put forwarded by the Fowler, you know the first law and second law were uh, being uh, you know uh, put forwarded by the Jules and other people. right? So, if you look at what is that zeroth law of thermodynamic? If two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with the third body, then they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. And this law is basis you know for the temperature measurement. We know that you must have must be having experience in your day in your life. That is you know if you uh, place the thermometer right on your armpit whenever you are having a fever to measure the temperature right right so you will take a more time am i right isn't it instead of uh, if you put in uh, that thing in your um, mouth where the liquid will be there right and it will take less time to reach the equilibrium temperature isn't it suppose be before time if you remove then you will so so it won't show you the your body temperature it will be showing the lower than that right so that we use for the temperature measurements and if you look at there are various ways of measuring temperature and uh, right there are three ways i am just trying to discuss over here and in each three cases right that we'll have to uh, you know satisfy the thermal equilibrium governed by the zeroth law of thermodynamics. If you look at if this thermometer which what you use is a, a mercury in a glass tube and you can use also some other uh, kind of uh, things like if you look at this a temperature here which will be shown let us say the mercury will go up and then you know that label because of expansion of mercury whenever it will be come in contact with the body right. Body means in the matter anything you can also use this thermometer, but this is having limitation of this thermometer this is a glass tube thermometers. And you can also go for a, a what you call a, a thermocouple where to two dissimilar metal when it join together and there are two junction one is we can call it as a hot junction right because you can put into a flame or some other higher temperature and then you can make it as a cold uh, junctions and then maybe ambient temperature then there will be what you call uh, see back effect and that gives you emf and that if you measure that emf then you can relate that thing to the temperature provided you know this cold temperature and generally people use ambient or the when 0 degree Celsius or the ice point being used. And there is a change in the resistance if uh, due to the temperature you can use a uh, what you call western breeze and then change these variables and then you can measure the uh, temperature and that. So, if you look at uh, basically one can measure and there are several various other ways of measuring the temperatures. But all the time it has to be uh, you know uh, satisfy the thermal equilibrium condition then only one can. But if you look at uh, we may measure because these are all variables like if you look at temperature is an intensive property or an extensive property intensive property. So, in intensive property we need to assign a numerical value to the thermal state of the system to define the temperature scale right otherwise we cannot like for example like if you take a mass right or a volume <coughs> so which are extensive property you can uh, this thing so therefore we need to look at temperature scale and uh, temperature scale is established by assigning numerical value to reproducible states this has been done like you know you and two reproducible state which are being used very much one is the ice point other is the steam point. And ice point if you look at the temperature of ice with air saturated uh, you know water at 0 degree Celsius 
being considered and the steam point is the temperature pure water with its vapor at one de, uh, one atmosphere pressure corresponding to 100 degree Celsius kind of things. And Celsius have used these two uh, points uh, ice point and the steam point and then found out a Celsius scale you know what we call degree Celsius and nowadays also we do use and similarly the Fahrenheit you know he assigned some value to the ice point to 30 degree Fahrenheit and the steam point to 212 degree Fahrenheit and made a scale. So, that is known as Fahrenheit scale. However, these scales uh, will be having the problems because the different materials have different you know temperature volume relations right and temperature scale based on the change in volume of material of mercury what we use in our day to day thermometers you know will be different than when we are using water or some other things right. So, therefore, if we use the mercury in glass thermometer and alcohol in glass thermometer or copper constantum thermocouple or a platinum resistant thermocouple thermometers, then you will find the temperatures you know will be different. So, if you look at these temperatures are different of course, you may say look it is not really much, but however, preciseness is very important when you do conduct measurements. So, therefore, it is important to devise a thermometer scale which is independent of the material that is very important right. So, whether it is possible or not we will see that we can think of a constant volume you know gas thermometers which will be uh, this is your containing gas which will be in a system I mean like you can say this is your temperature bath which will be And whenever the temperature will go up this person you know what will happen? This is having a flexible mercury which will go up and it will go up that distance I can connect it with the temperature over here whatever it is having provided the system will be in thermal equilibrium with the water bath or the temperature bath right. And so, if it is so then uh, what we will call the if I say this volume is constant because if I will keep in such a way that the volume of this gas uh, of this you know system what I was saying the bulb of the thermometer is constant that means this pressure you know is proportional uh, is a temperature is proportional to the pressure is not it. And that head which can give me the temperature whatever you know which changes will be occurring with this thermometer. So, triple point of the water has been accepted as a reference point internationally because of fact that all three phases solid, liquid and gas coexist simultaneously. If there is a small change in any of either pressure or temperature then there will be change the two three phases would not be there that may be two phase or may be single phase depending on situation. So, therefore, that is very precise definition and triple point of water is considered as a 273.16 Kelvin at one atmosphere pressure and it is considered to be the superior as compared to the what you call ice point or the boiling point. <coughs> and if I will use the ideal gas law and T is proportional to P at a constant volume then T by T T P that is corresponding to the triple point is equal to P by the P T P and I know this temperature T T P is known that is 270.16 Kelvin. So, therefore, the temperature you know I can really relate to the pressure provided I know the P T P which is also very precise. So, you can think of by conducting experiment and plot this calculated temperature for P by P T P and whether it is the helium gas or the nitrogen gas if you look at at a lower pressure you know it will be coming to the same you know temperature kind of things. All gases I have taken nitrogen or helium at a low pressure it will act like a and though uh, what I say you can extrapolate and put that temperature and that is being considered uh, you know as a uh, what you call ideal gas thermometer 
and uh, of course, it is having limitation that that you cannot go beyond the temperature or the below that temperature where the gases you know can liquefy. Even liquefy you cannot use that, that is the limitation of ideal gas uh, you know thermometer. So, above that one can use. So, among all uh, these gases helium has the lowest boiling point that is 4.21 uh, 5 Kelvin at 1 atom space which set the limit on the range of thermometer. Of course, at the high temperature gases can dissociate and if you look at international practical temperature scale was introduced in 1968 and they use a Kelvin thermodynamics a temperature scale which will be valid over all temperature ranges which is independent of property of the thermometric fluids. That means, whether you are using mercury or water or any other things. So, it will be not and that is <coughs> basically temperature uh, you know um, Kelvin can be related to the degree Celsius we just add to 70 degree 0.15 Kelvin. So, if you look at we will be discussing about this uh, ideal gas uh, you know temperature scale little bit whenever we are talking about second law of thermodynamics <coughs> which we will be discussing later on and uh, we will uh, basically you know uh, looked at the how heat is <coughs> uh, is a one form of energy interaction, it is a basically path function and then you look at various way of uh, temperature measurements and then we we'll looked at how we need to have a <coughs> um, practical temperature scales that we need to use it and that we will be using basically the Kelvin in our case. So, with this I will stop over. thank you very much.